Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. We're joined here on Real Agriculture by Magda Rigalski of uh, the University of Manitoba. And Magda, you're uh, looking at growing corn in, in Manitoba. Traditionally, we've seen a, a lag when we grow corn in a, a rotation following canola. Uh, maybe to, to set the stage, explain why, uh, why, why we see that. Yeah, canola being a very popular um, crop in Western Canada, uh, we do grow it and we grow it a lot. Uh, however, with the introduction of corn into the cropping system and more farmers are growing it, uh, we want to improve um, corn yields and uh, corn growth fo following canola. So what I'm looking at specifically is how corn does following canola versus soybeans. Um, uh, we're looking at it because uh, canola being a non-mycorrhizal crop, it does not allow those um, herbiscal mycorrhizal fungi to survive for corn to utilize and be able to take advantage of those nutrients. Whereas soybeans, they do have those mycorrhizal associations and they survive over until the next crop and therefore corn uh, can take advantage of that and be able to utilize those nutrients more efficient, efficiently within the soil or whether or not they're applied. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at different phosphate treatments to, to compensate for, for that? Yeah, so specifically we're looking at starter phosphorus uh, in the canola soybean study. Uh, we're applying uh, starter P at the beginning of the season at planting. Uh, we are using two different products. We're using Microessentials MESZ and we're using MAP. Uh, we also have a no phosphorus check. And what have you uh, what have you seen so far or noticed? Uh, so so far we have uh, seen uh, differences between uh, the control plots in canola and the control plots in soybean. Uh, the corn being a little bit less vigorous in the canola plots, whereas in the soybeans it can compensate quite better without the phosphorus. Uh, we are also seeing uh, height differences as well as there are differences in biomass uh, weight. Uh, that being less in corn following canola, more in corn following soybean. How about in the, the corn following canola, uh, the control versus the, the starter phosphorus treatment? Uh, and also there's a huge difference between the treatments right. and the starter. Uh, we're seeing uh, quite more vigorous corn, uh, higher corn, and uh, also um, better advancement in maturity. So the corn following canola is actually two to three days behind uh, the corn that received the treatment okay. from the check. So this is still... This is the first year of this study? Yeah, first year of the study. Uh, I don't have any concrete data yet. I only have averages and just raw data to kind of give you guys an idea of what we can expect. Uh, I will take the corn to yield and uh, measure moisture and see whether or not um, the starter phosphorus treatments result in um, better, dry, quicker dry down and uh, lower moisture um, at harvest. But you are seeing some exciting differences so far in terms of, of that starter phosphorus treatment following canola? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can see a huge difference between the st uh, no P check or no phosphorus was added and the uh, starter phosphorus that was added, especially in the canola uh, plots. And this research will be continuing? Yeah, we're continuing on into next year. So this year, we're uh, not only am I growing a corn crop, I'm also growing a wheat, barley, canola, soybean. Um, so it's an exciting year, but it'll be well, well worth it when we have two years of data to present. All right. Well, thanks yeah. for your time, Megan. Okay. Thank you very much.